The Q101 Morning Crew. On Q101. All right, Dave Chappelle tickets coming up in 60 seconds. But first, I have to remind myself sometimes that I live in one of the greatest cities in the world. That you could find corn dogs at 8 in the morning. That took me four seconds. <laughs> I, listen. Dog house? One of the facts that somebody came in they, that I didn't realize that corn dogs were made with corn bread. I was blown away by that too. Case didn't know it or Case the producer. But Kenzie knew this, of course, because what other kind of bread would it be? I said, if you find corn dogs in Chicago, I'll order some right now for us. And apparently, there are a lot of locations, including one I've been by a bunch of times and been to, Dog House in Lincoln Park. Dog H-A- House? Dog House, H-A-U-S. <laughs> They're open right now, and they have they have corn dogs, and they're delicious. If anybody, here's the thing: if anybody knows people that run Dog House or you listing and you run it, can you just spot me because I have diapers to pay for? And if you oh could- my god, you're not really gonna use your f- free plug right now, <laughs> so you don't have to buy me a corn dog. You're so annoying. And we can do it tomorrow because we have Popeyes coming in for our meeting later, thanks to me, uh, our big Q on one meeting. You're I not guess. buying it; you just suggested that that's what somebody else orders. Some heroes like to clarify. Some heroes don't wear capes. I put it in the universe, and it's happening. Fine. So he convinced you convinced me and Case to cash in on our corn dogs tomorrow, but you are ordering these tomorrow morning. I will get them for you. Just I promise. I, I hold up to my promises. As many as we want. Case said he can eat five. Five corn dogs? He can't. I can't have two. I, I actually took Case to a Cubs game, and he did eat five Buffalo hot dogs at the game. I usually go two to three at a, at a baseball game. Three hot dogs is a good place to stop. He ate five because I always said I'll buy whatever you want. Five and is it, his magic number. It is. Also up in your hood, uh, let's see, Wheaties in South Elgin, W-E-E-D-E-E-S, uh, someone checked in and said that's a pretty good corn dog from that place. Oh, I've not been there, but I will check it out. Not far from me. There's also a place called Kong Dog. hey <laughs> oh <laughs> Adriana checked in. There's one on UIC's campus that has corn dogs available. I bet there is. <laughs> but uh, how about this? In the meantime, 312-591-8300. Big, big monstrous news announced uh, yesterday here with Brian and Kenzie and Q101. Broke the news about Dave Chappelle playing United Center Wednesday, o- October 4th. Tickets go on sale tomorrow at 10 a.m. How about free ones before you can buy them from our great friends at Live Nation help make this happen with Brian and Kenzie. 312-591-8300. Want to see the funniest guy on the earth? Yes, you will. The Q101 Morning Crew. On Q101. Congrats to Kim in St. Charles. She got the Dave Chappelle tickets at the UC at the Madhouse. Wednesday, October 4th. Tickets go on sale tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. From our great friends at Live Nation and uh, Brian and Kenzie hooked you up. Dave Chappelle. Those things are going to be going for 1000 bucks at some point. So uh, we'll have more tomorrow. Don't worry about it. Right at this time, 8 o'clock uh, hour, this is your commute in. Be here. We'll have more tickets for Dave Chappelle for you uh, right there tomorrow. It's Brian and Kenzie on Q101. Gil Curtis with your headlines. This is not headline news. Today is World Tofu Day. Great news for anyone who enjoys mushy cubes of impossible blandness. <laughs> Captain Crunch's uniform has finally been updated to properly reflect his rank. So enjoy something new to stare at during dinner, divorced guys. Mick Jagger turns 80 today. He's fathered eight children by five different women. Or as Nick Cannon calls him, a big-time slacker. A plane manufacturer is developing flying taxis. Flying cars sound fun, but a real breakthrough would be getting taxi drivers to use this new technology called soap. And a Florida island has been overrun by rabbits. Locals have witnessed so much nonstop humping, it's like spring break never ended. This is not headline news. The Q101 Morning Crew. On Q101. Chili Peppers at the final night of Lala. That's coming up next week. Brian and Kenzie on Q101 will be all over, of course, Picnic this weekend, then Lollapalooza, and then we'll be a little bit longer for Riot Fest in September, but we'll take care of you on all those things. But now it's time to play a little fun game where you decide what we talk about next and what story do you want to hear more about. So I'm just going to give you two headlines. Headlines only, no information, and the story that you guys don't choose, we're not going to talk about. Two headlines, and at 312-591-8300, you judge what we talk about next and you want to hear more information about. Headline number one. Brother of Aaron Hernandez arrested for planning school shootings. Good God, what is wrong with that family? 
<laughs> what the hell? Good Lord. Maybe you have to do a little Google on Aaron Hernandez if you don't remember who he is. He played for the Patriots, and oh. then he won a Super Bowl, then he went to jail it was for murder. very interesting. Was it on Netflix, his little docuseries? Very They're interesting. Disturbing Netflix documentary. If you like crime stuff like me and Kenzie do in case we get in those wormholes of crime documentaries, yeah, it's in there for Aaron Hernandez. So, brother of Aaron Hernandez arrested for planning school shootings. Or, if you want to hear about this story, Illinois woman accused of throwing boat runner's phone in the water after argument. I'm fascinated with what caused this woman to grab the guy's throne and phone and throw it in the water. What? How do you let go of it so easy? <laughs> and the woman stole my phone through it. Like you didn't hold on to that? This thing cost a thousand bucks. I have death grip on that thing. And you're arguing and you had it out? Like put it in your pocket. Yeah, something. <laughs> I mean, just, yeah, just, yeah. <laughs> put it away before you finish yelling at You're already mouth. near water in general. Which story do you, the crew members, want to hear more about? And we'll give it to you coming up here at 820. 312 591 8300. Text in which story you want to hear more about. The Q101 Morning Crew. On Q101. Well, it's a situation where you decide what we talk about next, and you had the whole commercial break to do that with, so thank you for texting in. Uh, the headlines you decided on hearing more about. So, which story? We can only have time for one. Headline number one Brother of Aaron Hernandez arrested for planning school shootings. Headline number two Illinois woman accused of throwing boat runner's phone in the water after an argument. Now, I am stunned by the amount of people. This was so close. We've gotten about 278 votes already just in the break. It's almost neck and neck of people wanting to hear. I was hoping one I would know. Just, I was just hoping one would just dramatically overtake the other one. But the Aaron Hernandez story, his brother that is, took more of the votes. It was like by two though. It's by, yeah, it's crazy. So I'm sorry we're not gonna talk about the Illinois woman who threw the phone in the water. I guess we can assume alcohol was involved. But uh, uh, here you go. Here is the story Spoiler you chose. Spoiler alert, she's drunk. <laughs> yeah. So, Aaron Hernandez, just a ex-NFL player who was arrested after being accused of, well, convicted of murder, and then he killed himself in prison. That's Aaron Hernandez. This is the brother of ex-NFL player Aaron Hernandez, was arrested of uh, uh, planning two school shootings. Now, arrest documents say that uh, Dennis DJ Hernandez, they called him DJ, Reportedly planned shooting uh, up University of Connecticut and Brown University. Jeez. He was charged with threatening. This is the latest incident in a long line of arrests for him. Runs in the family, apparently. Uh, his girlfriend called police, which is good. When you know something's weird about someone and they're acting strange and threatening, don't be afraid to call somebody to, to do a check-in on it. Because people always say that later. Say, oh, he was acting weird, but, you know, I don't know. I didn't think he'd do this. Well, you never know on somebody. His girlfriend snitching. She's a snitch, but thank God she snitched. Um, he apparently, she told the police, he drove to the campuses and actually went in the classrooms. Not a student. Somehow got in the buildings. Don't you have to Jeez. have a, don't the colleges have pretty good lockdown now with code cards and stuff like that? or I feel fobs? Like college campuses are a little different, though, because they are, it's, it's different than like an elementary school and a high school and a junior high, how those are set up where you have to have, Meet someone at the front desk. I feel like you can you can just walk onto a college. Campus. I mean, I went to Bowling Green State University, and it was you know a little while ago, so that you could just do that. I remember going in the classes that like people I was hanging out with. I'd go to their class to meet up with them and stuff. But I figured today, and people can check in at, if you go to UIC or if you go to DePaul or Loyola or Downstate or wherever you go. Is there any kind of fob to get in the building or the classroom? That's terrifying if there isn't. But imagine how often do you hold the door open for people, too? Yeah. With all those kids walking, it'd probably be easy to filter in. Think someone held the door for Dennis Hernandez? Oh, <laughs> hey, I mean, hey, hey, bro, I'm late for social class. Let me it's in, like man. You have to make people more rude. Like, don't hold the door for anybody. Everyone I, has to individually scan. You're exactly right. People don't want to be rude, and then that sometimes backfires. So he apparently did all that. He went to the campuses and scouted out things, and he sent threatening text messages to his ex-girlfriend. So the cops came, and they found him at his home, and when he got there, he, he screamed, shoot me, according to the police, and ignored multiple commands, so they tased him, took him into custody, and he's getting some help now, and I don't know what, what charges. He was accused of throwing a brick at the offices of ESPN headquarters, too, earlier this year. What? He went, that was, family, because Aaron Hernandez, if you watch everything he involved, because he, uh, he got in charge. I believe charged for the killing of um, Odin Lloyd. That was the one thing he got convicted of. Yeah. Yes. But everything else, he's done a long rap sheet of being involved in crazy things. And he would just kind of snap. It was kind of a crazy glaze over where somebody would bump him and then he'd like beat the hell out of them. He just, he'd snap. And then for his brother, he'd be like, it's very, 
interesting. It was a weird, it's like he didn't have emotion. What is that called? It was like a sociopath um, or something? Yeah, so, exactly sociopathic yeah, it, behavior. It really reminded me of that because he just would glaze over as like he was a different person inside. And he was an incredible tight end. He was, him and Gronk together on the field were dominant. Uh, during that those times with Tom Brady. He played with Tim Tebow in college, by the way, too. So playing for the opposite, playing with an opposite kind of person on earth, Tim totally. Tebow. Yeah, very you know, opposite personality. Super Christian, super nice, super great guy, helps everybody. And no one saw it. And then he gets to the NFL and it has happened. And the documentary on Netflix about him, I can't remember what it's called, but it's amazing and, and also terrifying hearing the jail phone calls of Aaron Hernandez to his girlfriend and other things. And he was going to get convicted of more if he stayed alive. And he took his own life to just end it all. I mean, that's what's sad between him and his brother. They just seem to have a similar mental path. Insane. Insane. Well, there you go. That's the story you guys want to hear more about. We won't get to the Illinois woman accused of throwing boat runner's phone in the water after an argument. She was drunk. That's pretty much it. Uh, It's Q101. The Q101 Morning Crew. On Q101. The Q101 Morning Crew. On Q101. Brian and Kenzie on Q101. It's a story we followed quite a bit when it first started with that UPS drivers in Chicago are getting air conditioning for the first time. One of those facts that also made my brain go, Kenzie seemed to be on point with it, saying that, well, their doors are open half the time, so they don't really get air conditioning, and they're in and out all And we had drivers call up, and if you are a UPS driver, I'm always fascinated with the UPS driver. I always wanted to wear those shorts. Just, just, I love their outfit. It's badass. And you can just buy shorts. No, the brown. I don't. Th- I don't think I can buy that anywhere else. You want the brown outfit? That's the one that you envy of all the delivery drivers. I want the brown outfit and I want the black boots. I want all that. It looks like a good outfit for me. I like the outfit on King of Queens. It's green. Yeah. <laughs> I like the hunter green look. It's sure. nice. Yeah. So, UPS drivers in Chicago and the country reached a new contract. They were getting ready to strike. And I don't think, you know, there's a lot of this stuff going on and the actor's strike is going on right now and the writer's strike, which is potentially going to take our entertainment away, which you should support, by the way, your your people out there that you like in if they have a podcast or if, if they have something, support your actors and support that strike. Now, these guys, if they went on strike, you wouldn't get anything you buy on Amazon anymore. It would take like weeks more. Everything, this was going to cripple like it was during the pandemic, they said there was a supply chain shortage. This would be the Great Depression. That's what it'd be. The Great Depression. You have to go back to stores and buy stuff. But even then, stuff the wouldn't... package depression. <laughs> stuff wouldn't even get to stores. But they reached an agreement, 340,000 union workers for the Teamsters and UPS that avoided the strike. And they wanted, you know, just like a lot of people want. They want more money, better wage, better hours, better things, more a couple more vacation days. Here's what they got. See if this... Well, to somebody out there that works in the field, if this is enough... So, under the tentative agreement, both full and part-time UPS union workers will get two seventy-five more per hour this year. Two seventy-five more an hour. Two dollars and seventy-five cents more per hour this year. Okay. And then seven fifty more per hour over the length of their five-year contract. So it'll go up in increments. Oh, wow. I, I, I've heard that the seven UPS, fifty an hour more is, is a lot of money per hour. I've heard that the um, the drivers make six figures. The UPS drivers. It's, oh, yeah. it's a highly coveted position. But again, I don't know if we have a UPS driver out there who wants to call and explain if you're happy about the deal or not because uh, we're happy for you that you got a deal. And if they stop striking, they probably feel like it's decent. It was going to be. It actually didn't get on the streets yet, and they were still working, but it was going to be a monstrous strike if this happened. And like I said, you wouldn't get anything anymore. You wouldn't get anything in the mail. I would have been out there, man, in the line. Yeah? Pay them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They don't have time for this. Well, just like a lot of people, I don't know if you've ever fought for something at work and you got it and it's a great feeling, whether you negotiate more money or anything when you're talking about somebody with work. If you've gotten something, you want to share that, you can always check in too at 312-591-8300 because it's, it's a cool feeling when you beat the man. It is. It, they always say, though, if you, like, bring something up to your boss and he just says, okay, right away, you didn't ask for enough. Oh, hell yeah. That's the worst feeling when you're like, I, I'm not stopping for less than this. They're like, sure. Oh, my God, no. You need them to be like, I can't do that, but I can do this. Then you know you've asked for enough. That is the worst when you're like, uh-oh. One of, like, when I first started in radio, I remember I found out that they were willing to pay me 15000 more than I had asked for. Wow. Because my friend, when I, after I worked for the company for a little bit, my friend was higher up, and they're like, just so you know what you could have gotten. I'm like, oh. See, that's the worst feeling. You thought you won. Yeah. And you didn't. Just a big old loser, per usual. Hey, I'll share, say, I, I, I'll share a story starting in radio as well. When I got 
my first morning job. This was in another city, actually. It was in Detroit. And I was super young. I was like in my you know, early 20s. Didn't know what the hell I was doing. And I was making 40 grand a year. For me, at that you know, 40 grand, I was rich. I was fine. I was living single in a one-bedroom apartment. And they put me into mornings. And I thought, yeah, this is going to be amazing. But I probably deserve more money. A little bit more. They didn't say anything. So I walked in and set a meeting, and in there was like four executives when I walked in. I'm like, oh, boy, I'm scared. And they go, well, what do you think you deserve? And I sat there for a minute. I didn't know what the hell I was doing. I just came up with a number of 65. Okay. It's, it sounds like a, it's a lot. It's a lot of money. It's a big, it was a big raise a, in your a yeah. huge raise, big money, and I thought they're going to say like 42, and then I'll take 42. That's what I thought they would do. Instead, they all just sat there and went, just what you said. Okay, great. You're good. 65. And they all got up, shook my hands. Great, Brian. We're looking forward to working with you here. Only did I find out later that the previous guy was making $300,000 a year. <laughs> I'm like, why? Well, I'm just... I can't go back and do a redo. Can I throw a flag? Oh, God. There's a little inside information for you on how sometimes jobs work and radio works. Maybe you're in that situation where you had something like that, too. I was devastated. Even though... 65 was awesome for me at the time. That's how I felt. I was I was so blown away at that radio job. They offered me 55, and I thought they were going to offer me like 35. Yeah. And I was going to be like, I'm not moving for less than 40. <laughs> so when they, when they threw down 55, I'm like, oh, I didn't know what to do with myself. That was above my, my final number. It was above it. I didn't know what to do with myself. Yeah. Oh, my God. And then here's what someone just texted in KP. Rule one of negotiations, never be the first to say the number. But the problem is bosses will pin you on that. Well, you want to raise. Well, what do you think you deserve? What, what, what's your number in your head? And they, because you know they have the number and they're going to lowball you all the day. They'll always lowball you. Yeah, it's very, it's very uncomfortable. It sucks. It I'm sucks. like, hey, get your low balls out of here, boss. <laughs> no balls from you. Well, congrats to the UPS people out there. They got their strike. They got their money. Overall, it's a $30 billion new contract for our listeners out there. We have a lot of those guys out there driving around. Appreciate you. And I'm just curious from them, too, if you want to check in, if it's if you think it's a good deal, if you're happy with that deal. It's Brian and Kenzie on Q101. The Q101 Morning Crew. On Q101. The Q101 Morning Crew. On Q101. Brian and Kenzie on Q101. We've told you about some A-level fantastic prizes all morning long. We've already given away a bunch. And coming up next here at 8.50, one more for you. How about this? The 312 Comedy Festival. It's Nate Bargetsy at the Chicago Theater. Two shows added. So there's Friday, November 3rd at 9.30. Sunday, November 5th at 5 o'clock. And tickets go on sale Friday at 10 a.m. for this. Just go to 312comedyfestival.com. Actually, there'll be a link up at q101.com for it. Make it easier for you. Uh, but couple tickets this guy this is kenzie's favorite guy this is his number one comedian for kenzie it's it's literally like the best comedian in the world you don't understand he's so funny he makes the most everyday minuscule things hilarious and you can watch him with anybody my parents can be over my husband's parents i could watch him with my son it's not uncomfortable it's the cleanest comedy, which is sometimes the smartest. You have to be very creative. Sure, it's easy to go oh, go blue. I think he's like a genius. Seriously, I love him. I can't wait to see him because I've never seen him live. And because of your selling of me of, of him to me, I'm going. So coming up here just in about seven minutes, 8.50. Stay right here. We'll have the tickets for you for the event. The Q101 Morning Crew. On Q101. All right, here we go. Uh, A-level Big time entertainment for you. That's not always a concert from Brian and Kenzie on Q101 like this one. The 312 Comedy Festival. Uh, Nate Bergetzi at the Chicago Theater. 312-591-8300. This is Kenzie's number one guy in comedy. Oh, he's amazing. Yeah. So we're all, all going to be I've, there. You, I've traveled to see him. How far? Uh, we did like a few hour drive to Iowa to see him. Damn. We had to stop in... Um, God, there's a there's a city in Iowa, and it's like after a place that I actually want to go to. It's like Brazil, Iowa, or something weird like that. It's so funny. Um, it's not Paris. I know that. <laughs> we'll take it as Brazil. Uh, 312-591-8300. Peru. Peru, Iowa. Yeah, there's a Peru. <laughs> Did he play there? 
No, it was like we had to stop and charge the car and then keep going for another oh. few hours. <laughs> All right, you get tickets to the comedy show with Nate Bergetzi at the Chicago Theater right now, 312-591-8300. And uh, enjoy not only great music with us, but laughs. Uh, great big show, the 312 Comedy Festival. Thanks to our friends at Jam Productions for helping out with this. And, of course, right here from Brian and Kenzie on Q101. The Q101 Morning Crew on Q101.